Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh, and although I have a PhD in clinical psychology and I'm obsessed with the science of love, of late I've been thinking a lot about aging and how we age. Uh, in fact, I don't like the term anti-aging. I prefer pro-aging or aging well. I like to think that I've been aging very well, and it's because partly that I'm really obsessed with the science. I want to know what to do to keep my cells younger, to keep my psychology younger, to help me live a very long life. I want to tell you that my parents were diagnosed with cancer at my age and died soon after. So I have a real reason. I'm fighting a genetic predisposition. So basically, science has come up with three simple things that have been proven through numerous studies to help us live longer. The first one you know about, you've heard it. You don't want to hear me say it again, but I'm going to. Exercise, yeah. This keeps your cells young. It helps them regenerate. It stresses your tissues to make them create new cells. So you've got to do it. You've got to exercise regularly. At least 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise four to five times a week. Or I tend to do really intense exercise three or four days a week, and then I do long walks on the alternate days. The other thing is nutrition. You can't let our food industry kidnap your biology. Our processed foods are filled with pesticides. They're filled with sugar that is carbohydrate that um, basically is cancer's favorite food, it can also lead to heart disease, diabetes, obesity, it goes on. So you gotta get rid of the white stuff. You gotta get rid of the rice and the pasta and all the grains and all the sugar and eat good proteins, good healthy fat. Fat is not bad for you. Fat is fuel, fat is good for you. But you gotta eat the right kinds of fat. Avocado oil, I say evo avo, extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil. Okay. Now let's get into my wheelhouse where I'm really obsessed, and this is our psychology. Well, you know, some people are type A personalities, maybe present company included here, uh, meaning that we stress, our uh, systems get really amped up when there is stress, and people like us who are type A's have to use really good coping strategies to reduce stress in our lives. So that means I do mindful meditation on a regular basis, I make sure I get enough sleep. If I can't get to sleep, um, I, I don't take drugs or anything, or I be aware that you know alcohol helps you get to sleep, but then it brings you up again, it takes you down, then it brings you up. So if you're having trouble sleeping, uh, reduce your alcohol intake for sure. Um, but being calm and relaxed is one of the best ways that I can reduce my stress on a regular basis. I also psychologically reframe things. Sometimes when life is so stressful and I have such a big problem to solve. I imagine it's like a skit from Saturday Night Live. I, I imagine that it's just ludicrous what's going on and I step back from it and watch it like a movie almost. And I, I don't know, it works for me. It helps reduce my stress. Finally, social support. Did you know that prolonged feelings of loneliness are as bad for your health as obesity and smoking? This is why I specialize in the science of relationships. Now, you don't have to have a one-on-one -on -one romantic relationship until death do us part from beginning to end. But what you do need are at least a handful of intimate friends. You need good social support around you. So let me ask you this. If you ended up, God forbid, in an emergency room one night, who would you call? How many people would be there? Who's there to care for you? And if the work later in life is to work on building these strong social support systems, then that's as important as exercise, diet, being mindful, reducing stress. So those are the three takeaways. You always have to look at every problem in life, including healthy aging, uh, from a biological, psychological, and social lens. I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. We'll see you next time.